It's always so horrific to come on here and tell you all about yet another case involving the death of a child. When we hear about all of the horrific things that children can go through at the hands of their parents, it's gut-wrenching and can be too much to bear. But what's even more infuriating is when a child is murdered and the parents try to lie, cover their tracks, and place the blame on everyone but themselves, the person who is meant to protect their child. This case involves the death of a sweet, adorable, five-year-old little girl, and the stories her mother tries to tell are just beyond belief. But before we get into the case, I want to say a huge thank you to Colin Broom for partnering with me on today's video. Your gut health is so important for your overall well-being. A lot of people don't realize, but your gut health plays a huge role in your energy levels, your concentration, and how you feel throughout the day. That is why I've been using Colon Broom to support my gut. Colon Broom Premium is a high fiber dietary supplement that promotes normal function of your immune system to help you improve your gut health and reach your overall health goals. Their premium quality fiber supplement helps to absorb water and expand the partially digested food in your stomach, then helps it move along your intestinal tract to make for easier release, aka bowel movements. I'm someone who has struggled with gut health for literally my entire life. I suffer from cramps, low energy, and my stomach never feels quite right. I try my best to eat a balanced diet, but it can feel impossible to keep track of everything I eat to ensure that I have a healthy gut, along with everything else that I worry about with protein, macros, vitamins, minerals, and all that. But thanks to Colon Broom, it is so much easier to make sure that I am getting what I need for my gut. It's also been clinically proven that Colon Broom Premium aids with weight loss with its key ingredients, L-carnitine, which converts fat into fuel, Capsimax, known for reducing cravings, and psyllium husk, which improves gut health. Colon Broom also helps with your overall well-being. Colon Broom Premium is made with vitamin B6, which is an essential nutrient that contributes to energy yielding and psychological function. It helps to reduce tiredness and fatigue, boosting your energy and helping your overall immune system functioning. Colon Broom's sugar-free, gluten-free, vegan, and non-GMO digestive supplement uses the natural plant-based sweetener, Stevia, so even with no sugar added, it still tastes amazing. I like to drink one scoop each morning with my water. I have the strawberry flavor, which is my absolute favorite. I love to have something sweet first thing in the morning with my morning eggs, so this is an absolute delight to add to my morning. Since starting Colon Broom, my gut feels so much lighter. I can concentrate longer at work because I'm not worried about my stomach hurting. And I have more energy, which is so important to me because I am a very active person. So give Colon Broom a tryout for yourself with the special offer that Colon Broom has for viewers of my channel. Head to colonbroom.com slash Rachel Shannon True Crime and use code SHANNON10 to save up to 70% off of a six month supply of Colon Broom, which comes out to only 50 cents per serving. Once again, that's colonbroom.com slash Rachel Shannon True Crime using code SHANNON10 to save up to 70% off a six-month supply. Thank you again so much to Colon Broom for partnering with me on today's video. With that being said, let's get into the case. Today, we will be discussing the tragic death of Destiny Oliver. Destiny Oliver was born on October 7th, 2013 to parents Robin Howington and Antoine Oliver, and she had three brothers, Jeremiah, Gavin, and Trey. At the time, Destiny was living with her mother, Robin, and her two-year-old little brother, Gavin, in the Fountain City neighborhood in Knoxville, Tennessee. At the time, Robin and Antoine were not together, and Robin was dating another man named Daniel Hensley. According to what I was able to gather by watching the trial and interviews and all of that, it did not seem like Robin and Antoine ever had a good relationship at all, but I do believe he was still involved in Destiny's life to some degree. The only children Robin had custody of at the time were Gavin and Destiny. According to what Robin would later say, Antoine was abusive and had a history of assault. She said that they did stay in contact with each other so Antoine could come and see her or the children, but even after they stopped seeing each other, their interactions with one another were not pleasant. I will get more into that later in the video. Saturday, September 14th, 2019 started as a relatively normal day. Robin took five-year-old Destiny and her two-year-old brother, Gavin, to the park. 
there, they played and laughed and spent their time as normal. Soon after, the family went home to spend their evening at home. However, by 8.52 that evening, 911 received a call from Robin to report that Destiny has been shot in their home. In the call, she said that a random black man entered their home to rob them, but ended up shooting her daughter. She said that the door was left unlocked and the man just randomly entered and shot Destiny. She said that she's been shot in the chest and isn't breathing, going on to say that the perpetrator has fled the home and drove away in a black Chrysler 300. Officers arrived to the scene shortly after and there, they found five-year-old little Destiny lying on the couch unresponsive after suffering from a single gunshot wound to her chest. First responders tried everything they could to save the little girl's life, taking her to the University of Tennessee Medical Center for treatment. However, it was at the hospital where five-year-old little Destiny would later be pronounced dead. After she was pronounced dead, Destiny was sent off to the medical examiner for an autopsy, and it was there that the medical examiner found that Destiny was shot while holding the TV remote. When she was shot, the bullet went through her hand and then through the remote before going through her chest and exiting her body. After this, Destiny's mother, Robin, was taken from the hospital to the police station where she was questioned by police. And let me say, in that police interview, these officers are not messing around. They are very aggressive from the start, yelling and saying that they want to know the truth about what happened to this five-year-old little girl. And once I tell you how Robin spoke with them, you will see why they were so frustrated with her. Robin tells the officers in this interview that again, that evening, the family were at the playground before they walked home. She said that as they were walking home, she got the feeling that somebody was following her. So instead of taking the normal route home, she took an alley to the home to try and avoid being followed. She said that once they got home, she put Gavin and Destiny on the couch, turned on Netflix, and continued making dinner, which was a roast that she had started earlier. As she was cooking, she said that she didn't even hear the door open, but the next thing she knew, there was a black man standing in her home who then shot Destiny. She said she saw the man's face, and when she saw him, her eyes were as wide as can be. He then fled the home, driving in his black Chrysler. She said that no one else was in the home when that happened. In the interview, when she was asked about her relationship with Antoine, she expressed that he was extremely abusive and violent. She said that there were times that he would come over angry and call her names. She said that there was a history of him beating her and strangling her. But she did say that on the day of the shooting, Antoine was not present and said that even though Destiny called him that day after school, they didn't actually see him that day. However, investigators knew this whole time that the story that Robin was telling just was not true. They talked about how in no world would a random stranger walk into their home to shoot a child. There aren't many people out there who would walk into a home with the intent of robbing and then choose to shoot a random child rather than shooting her, an adult who's standing right there. She's a way easier target. She's an adult and she would definitely more likely be the one shot in a random intruder scenario. Not many people out there are sick enough to target a child like that, especially a random child that there's no other motive there. They just come in, shoot a child and leave. It does not make any sense. So these officers suggest that maybe someone with a grudge came in and shot Destiny. They said that the only reason someone would want to shoot a child like this was if they wanted to get back at Robin, someone with a personal connection to her. They suggested that maybe Antoine was angry that day and came into the home to shoot off around and scare Robin. After all, he had come into their house angry and threatening multiple times before but in the mess of all of it, he shot his daughter instead. After making this suggestion and adding a bit of pressure, Robin cracked. She told the officers that it was actually Antoine that came into the home and shot Destiny. 
She said that she was scared of him and scared of what he would do due to all of the abuse she suffered at his hands. So, she didn't want to tell them initially. Now, Robin is saying that Antoine arrived to the home once they got back from the park. He barged into the home and the two got into a very heated argument. In the heat of everything, Antoine shot Destiny and fled the scene, driving away in his white Chrysler. Robin said that she didn't really think that Antoine intended to shoot Destiny. She believed that she was actually the intended target. Finally, officers felt like they were starting to get the truth out of Robin. They knew that going into this interview that there was this documented history of abuse between her and Antoine, so they believed that this situation must have been some sort of domestic incident. But even after hearing this story, they were not convinced that Antoine was the shooter. They still thought that it was possible that Robin was the shooter. Again, as the initial police interview was happening, they knew that Robin was lying. She was contradicting herself, hiding certain facts, and trying to spin the story in all sorts of different ways until she was confronted with evidence. Just based off that, they knew that she had to be lying about something and was in self-preservation mode. Then, as the investigation went on, they found more and more evidence that contradicted what Robin was saying even further. First, let's talk about what happened with Robin while Destiny was at the hospital. At the time, investigators asked Robin for her cell phone so that they could take it into evidence. However, she refused to give it to them. Then, she went into the bathroom and tried to destroy her phone by running it underwater. After that, she tried paying someone in the hospital bathroom to take her phone so that police wouldn't find it and take it in for evidence. According to Robin, she did this because she was afraid that officers were going to find out that she was involved with selling drugs and she didn't want them to know. But, obviously, that behavior was very, very suspicious. What else is she trying to hide? Then, going back to the scene of the home where Destiny was shot. After examining the home and the outside areas, officers actually found that there was a gun hidden in the bushes in front of the home. When asked if she had a gun, Robin said no, but her boyfriend Daniel did. She said that he brought it over to her home because she was always having nightmares of someone coming in and trying to murder or rape her. She did have a history of being raped by another person, so this was something that was always terrifying to her. But she said that even though Daniel would bring the gun to her home for her own protection, she said that she never touched the gun. She said that she told Daniel to put it into storage and she thought he did, but instead, he must have put it in the bush for whatever reason. She assured officers that the gun in the bush was not going to match the gun that was used to shoot Destiny. But after being pushed and told that they have the ballistics, she admitted that this was actually the gun used to shoot Destiny. But now, there was another problem. How did Antoine know where that gun was? How did he have access to it inside the home? None of that made any sense. And if that was the gun that shot Destiny, why did Daniel put it in the bushes? Also, how would that work if he wasn't even there when it happened? None of this made any sense. As the investigation continued, detectives found something huge that threw a massive wrench into the already unbelievable story Robin was telling. There was a neighbor across the street from Robin who had a ring doorbell camera that picked up all of Robin's movements from the evening of Saturday, September 14th. The camera showed that by 8.42 p.m., there was someone parked in front of Robin's house and it looked like they were waiting there for several minutes. Shortly after, Robin, Destiny, and Gavin arrive home from the park. Destiny walks in first, with Robin and Gavin following after. By 8.46 p.m., someone walks into the house and stays inside for 63 seconds. It is thought that maybe this is someone meeting up with her for a quick drug transaction. This person waited for Robin to get home, 
and then waited for Robin to go inside and get her kids inside and all settled, and then the person comes in for a quick 60-second transaction before leaving. It's thought that it's possible and probable that Robin probably had her gun out and with her when the person entered the home. Why? Because it makes sense to be armed when you are doing an illegal drug transaction. You are probably dealing with some dangerous people. Then, a minute after that, Robin leaves her home, leaving her two-year-old and five-year-old in the home alone when she moves the car outside. Then she re-enters the home and three minutes later, she calls 911 to report the shooting. While on that 911 call, she lies about what happened. She said that a random black person entered the home and shot her child. But we know that based on that video, that nobody else was in her home or present at the scene when her child was shot. This video also shows that as she was on the phone with the 911 operator, she took the gun out of the home and then stashed it in those bushes. She was the one who tried hiding the gun. She was the only adult present when her child was shot. Not only that, but after examining the gun from that bush, they found that it had been wiped clean. Robin had wiped the gun of any fingerprints or DNA that was on that gun before stashing it in that bush. After finding out all of this evidence, it was crystal clear to investigators that Robin was lying about literally everything she had told them. So she went in for a second interview where she continued to try and spin her web of lies, but she was confronted with all of this evidence they had. And now Robin changed her story for a third time. She was now saying that somehow her two-year-old little child must have found the 9mm handgun in the home and shot Destiny with it. As she was telling this story, she ensured the officers that the gun was somewhere in the closet, placed up high, somewhere safe. She said that the two-year-old must have grabbed something like a stool to step up on, then climbed up and found the gun before going and shooting his older sister. When it came to why she wiped the gun down and tried to get rid of it, she said that it was her maternal instinct. She didn't want her two-year-old's DNA to be on the gun. She really thought that the police were immediately going to buy her story about some intruder coming in, so she felt that she needed to cover whose DNA and prints were really on the gun. Then, when examining her phone, police did find evidence that Robin was involved in selling narcotics such as pills. Not only that, but officers found a text in her phone where she told a friend that Gavin had shot Destiny. So, while she was telling officers all of these different versions of what happened, she was there texting a friend saying that Gavin shot Destiny. All she was doing from the very beginning was lying and lying and lying over and over and over, trying to protect herself in the whole thing. She wasn't worried about anybody but herself. After finding all of this evidence and proving that Robin was a liar, she was arrested and charged with six counts, including aggravated felony murder, child neglect, making a false report, tampering with evidence, and attempted tampering with evidence. At her bail hearing, she was given a bail of $500,000, which was not posted. For the five years that followed, Robin awaited her trial in jail. Finally, after delay after delay, by March 4th, 2024, the trial for Destiny's tragic death started. The prosecution argued that no matter how five-year-old little Destiny got shot, Robin is responsible. No matter if it truly was two-year-old Gavin who picked up the gun and shot her, it's Robin's fault. They talked about all of the different stories she told all throughout this and how she was much more concerned with her own self-preservation than actually taking accountability for what happened. The prosecution said that there's absolutely no way that Gavin grabbed a stepping stool, opened the closet door, then reached up to a high shelf to grab that gun. We heard that according to Daniel, Robin's boyfriend, earlier in the evening, Antoine picked Destiny up from school and dropped her back off home that day. When he dropped her off, him and Robin got into a heated argument because Daniel was at the house and Antoine was jealous of Robin's new relationship. In the heat of the argument, Robin grabbed a gun and threatened Antoine with it. Antoine then grabbed the gun from Robin, took it apart, and threw it on the ground before leaving in his car. After that, Daniel picked up the gun and put it back together before putting it away in the house. 
after Antoine left, that is when Robin took her kids to the park. Then according to that ring doorbell footage that we discussed earlier, after the park, it appears that Robin made a drug deal. Texts and a witness, a buyer of Robin's, would later confirm that she did sell pills. After this drug deal went down, Robin went outside to move her car and smoke a cigarette, and three minutes later, she called 911 to report the shooting. The prosecution believes that she probably was not responsible with her gun. She probably left it out right there within reach of her two-year-old, and that is how he got the gun. No matter how she tries to spin these stories, Robin is always responsible for her daughter's death, whether she pulled the trigger herself or if she left a gun out within a two-year-old's reach. The defense, on the other hand, they said that Robin suffers from PTSD from being raped by a police officer in her past. They said that she's only lying because she was so overwhelmed and overcome with grief that she didn't know what to say. She was intimidated by those male officers in that interrogation room, so that is why she went into self-preservation mode. She isn't a liar. She didn't mean to lie and make things up. She was scared and was in a state of crisis due to her PTSD. In the trial, Robin did take the stand to testify in her own defense. She continued to say that Gavin must have either moved a stool to get access to the gun or Daniel had placed the gun somewhere other than where she normally kept it. Daniel must have put it somewhere lower where Gavin could reach it after the whole argument with Antoine. She described that after getting home from the park, she went inside with the kids to make sure they were okay. She then went outside to smoke a cigarette and move her car but when she started to come back in, she saw a light flash. Then she walked in to see Gavin screaming and crying with the gun lying on the floor and Destiny lying on the couch, dead from a gunshot wound. Immediately, she called 911, then grabbed the gun and put it outside. According to her, she put the gun outside to prevent any further harm. She said that she lied to the dispatcher and officers about what happened because she didn't want Gavin to have to live with the fact that he shot his sister for the rest of his life. She continued to deflect all of the blame from herself, saying that she never would have killed her baby. She said that Destiny would have never been shot if Anton never came over that day, ignoring the fact that she brandished a gun at Anton. She grabbed it, and even if she did tell Daniel to put it away, it's still her responsibility to make sure it's put away somewhere she normally kept it. She even said that Daniel didn't actually know where she kept it, so how would he know where to put it to begin with? I will show you some of her testimony, and just to note, they actually call Daniel Callie because he's from California, so that's sort of his nickname. So when Robin refers to someone named Callie, she is talking about her boyfriend, Daniel. Antoine was supposed to pick Destiny up from school, and he did. Um, instead of keeping her till around seven, uh, he came to my house instead and started acting all right because I had a new boyfriend that he didn't know anything about. He and Callie get into a little argument out front. Yes. And as a result of that, did you ask him to leave? Multiple times. And did he leave? No, sir. As a result of that, his not leaving, what did you do? I went into my house and got the gun and brought it outside and asked him to leave. And what did he do in response to that? He took the gun from me and he took it apart. And what did he do with it? And threw it on the ground. And then he left? Correct. And what happened to the gun on the ground? Callie picked it up. Let me stop you there. Callie is? My, my boyfriend at the time. And his name is? Daniel Hensley. Okay. And he picked it up? Yes, sir. And what, what did he do with the pieces? Uh, he put it back together. So after Antoine left and Callie picked the gun up, <coughs> what did the two of you do? We went inside where the kids were. And who had the gun at that time? He did. Did you ask him to do anything with it? I told him to put it up because I had to tend to my kids. And had you ever told Callie where you kept that gun? No. And on sep September 17th, of 2019, when you were speaking with Wardlaw, 
and he he told you several times that Gavin could not have reached that closet shelf, right? Yes. So when he told you no, that wasn't true. Do you recall what your response to him was? Yes, sir. What was that? I told him that I assumed that Gavin had either moved a stool or the gun was not where I kept. Now, I'm going to shift to September 14th of 2019. You called 911 at about 8.53, 54 in the evening. Is that correct? Yes, sir. What had you and the kids been doing that day? We went to Chuck E. Cheese, a friend of mine's, and to the park. So, was there a time at which you went back outside to the car? Yes. What were you doing? I was smoking, because I do not smoke in my house around my kids. And what else did you do? I moved my car. Okay. When you came back from moving the car, what, what did you do? I was walking up to my house, and it's a glass door, and I seen a flash of light go off. <laughs> and when I walked in, Gavin was screaming and crying, and the gun was on the ground. <laughs> and, and did you see where Destiny was at that point? Yes, she was on the couch. And was she moving at all? No. Did you try to speak with her at all? Multiple times. I'm sorry. Multiple times. And did she ever respond to you at that point? Oh, sir. What was going through your mind at that moment? I couldn't fucking believe what was going on. What did what did you do? I got the gun and I took it outside. Why did you take it outside? Because I didn't want it to cause any more harm. When you made that 911 call, did you know Destiny had been shot? Yes. And you told them that a black male, unknown black male, entered the door and fired a shot and shot Destiny. Yes. Why did you tell that story to 911? Because I didn't want Gavin to live with the fact that he had shot his sister for the rest of his life. In her testimony, she never really addresses why she specifically said that it was a black man that entered the home and shot her daughter. She only said that she isn't racist and you can see that by who she chooses to date and the fact that her children are biracial. But honestly, I don't know why she would specifically say that it was a black man that shot her daughter. I believe that there had to have been some sort of racial bias there, but that's just me. There were also forensic experts who testified at the trial that this very well could have been an accidental shooting. They discussed how there was gunshot residue found on both Robin and Gavin's clothing. Now, there are three ways that GSR can end up on someone's clothes. Either they shot a gun, were within a few feet of someone shooting a gun, or they touched someone else who recently shot a gun. So, that shows that both Robin and Gavin were present when the gun was shot or immediately after. Based on the projection of that bullet, it was possible that Gavin was the one who shot his sister. The forensic experts say that if a gun is left fully loaded, cocked back with one in the chamber, with the safety off, all a two-year-old would have to do is pull back the trigger. So, it's possible that Gavin could have accidentally shot that gun. But again, the bigger question is how Gavin could have accessed the gun in the first place. For me, that is the biggest question here. 
and I do think that Robin left that gun out after that drug deal. Really, the only other arguments that the defense had was that she suffers from PTSD, and that is the reason she lied. Not because she was trying to hide her involvement, not because she was trying to pass the blame off on a two-year-old for her actions. At the trial, they discussed pretty much everything that I've told you up to this point, and after five days of arguments, both sides made their closing arguments. The prosecution told the jurors that based on the evidence as well as what Robin said herself, she is guilty of felony murder. This means that she committed a murder while in the act of committing another felony, which in this case is failing to protect destiny. The prosecutor argued, quote, we are here because of one person's actions, continuing. It could have been prevented. It should have been prevented by the one person who had the duty and the responsibility to do so. And like I said, failed miserably at it. The defense continued to say that the gun was either appropriately stored and Gavin somehow got access to it, or Daniel put it somewhere where Gavin could reach it, unbeknownst to Robin. She only lied because she suffers from PTSD, which was made worse in the interrogation room by police. Still, throughout the entire trial and everything that we discussed, no matter what story Robin was telling, it was always someone else's fault. She never accepted that maybe Gavin accessed the gun because of her own mistake. Maybe she misplaced it. Nope, none of it was her fault. She said that it was Antoine's fault for coming over. It was Daniel's fault for not storing it properly. It was Gavin's fault for pulling the trigger. Which to me, again, is crazy because all of those things have to be true for Gavin to be able to even shoot his sister. The gun had to be loaded. It had to be cocked back with one in the chamber and the safety had to be off. Those things literally go directly against the first rule that you should be following when you have a gun. You never store a gun fully loaded, especially not one with the bullet in the chamber and then also with the safety off. There's so, so many things that they had to have done wrong for Gavin to be able to even accidentally shoot the gun to begin with. After closing arguments, the jury went in for deliberations and after less than two hours of deliberation, they came back with their verdict. They found that Robin Howington was guilty of six charges, including a lesser count of reckless homicide rather than felony homicide, two counts of aggravated child neglect, false reports to police, and evidence tampering. So this jury, is that correct? Yes. I understand the jury has reached a unanimous verdict as to each of the counts contained within this indictment. Is that correct? Yes. Sir. If you would stand, please, sir. Ms. Howington, if you would stand and as to the first count of this indictment charging uh, felony, uh, first degree felony murder, as the jury reached a unanimous verdict. Yes, we have. And that verdict is what, please? Uh, the jury, uh, we the jury find the defendant Robin Rebecca Allington guilty of reckless homicide. As to the second count alleging aggravated child neglect, has the jury reached a unanimous verdict? Yes, sir. And that verdict is what, please? We the jury find the defendant Robin Rebecca Allington guilty of aggravated child neglect. As to the third count, alleging aggravated child neglect, has the jury reached a unanimous verdict? Yes, sir. That verdict is what, please? We, the jury, find the defendant Robin, Robin Rebecca Howington guilty of aggravated child neglect. As to the fourth count, alleging initiating or filing a false uh, report to law enforcement, has the jury reached a unanimous verdict? Yes, sir. That verdict is what, please? We, the jury, find the defendant Robin Rebecca Howington guilty of initiating a false report to a law enforcement officer. As to the fifth count, alleging tampering with evidence, has the jury reached a unanimous verdict? Yes, sir. And that verdict is what, please? We, the jury, find the defendant, Robin Rebecca Howington, guilty of tampering with evidence. And as to the sixth count, alleging attempted tampering with evidence, has the jury reached a unanimous verdict? Yes, sir. And that verdict is what, please? We, the jury, find the defendant, Robin Rebecca Howington, guilty of attempted tampering with evidence. As of right now, we don't know the sentence that she will receive for these charges. The trial just happened a week or so ago, and the sentencing isn't set to take place until April 19th. But as soon as we know the sentence, I will let you know either by commenting or updating the description box. As far as we know right now, the sentence for reckless homicide ranges from 15 to 25 years behind bars. So no matter how this goes, she will be spending a good amount of time in prison. So that is all the information that I have for today's case. Obviously, no matter how you try and spin this case, it's a tragic one. A five-year-old little girl lost her life for absolutely no reason. 
I personally think that it is possible that Gavin was the one who accidentally shot his sister. There is some evidence that says that and we don't know enough to say that within the three minutes from Robin entering the home to when she called 911 that she would have shot her daughter for whatever reason. But I do think that Destiny's death is absolutely Robin's fault. I believe that she was completely irresponsible with that gun. I think she probably had it on her during that drug deal. She probably left it sitting on the living room table, fully loaded and ready to go. And being a curious two-year-old, Gavin picked it up and accidentally shot it. I think with those stories she told, she knew that she was responsible for the shooting in one way or another. She knew that it was her actions that caused her child to have access to the gun. And in that moment, she was trying to deflect the blame as far away from herself as possible. I find it infuriating that Robin refuses to take any accountability for what happened. Everything is someone else's fault. She even said, I don't want Gavin living his life knowing he shot his sister. How about, I don't want to live my life knowing that I left a fully loaded gun out for my children to get into. It's not Gavin's fault. It's not Antoine's fault. It's not Daniel's fault. It's Robin's fault that her daughter was shot. And I will stand by that. I think if this truly was a situation where the gun was properly stored and somehow Gavin still accessed it, I don't think she would have come up with all of these different stories because I think that she would have really known in her heart that this was an accident and that this was not her fault. But I think the fact that she made up all of these different stories shows that she knows that all of this is her fault fault. This case is a great example of what can happen if you own a gun and are not responsible with it. I personally own a gun and even though I do not have any children, I still will not risk any sort of accidents from happening. I know where my gun is at all times. I know where I keep it, I know how I store it, and if it went missing or somehow someone else had access to it, I would know immediately. Why? Because honestly, a lot would have to happen for someone to find my gun and take it. Why? Because I am a responsible gun owner and will never even risk something like this happening now or when I do eventually have kids running around the house. Let this case be an example for anyone thinks that it's not possible for a kid to accidentally shoot a gun because it happens far too often. But with all of that being said, I really wanna know what you all think about this case. Do you think that Gavin really did accidentally shoot his sister? Or do you think that Robin is actually the shooter? Maybe it was revenge for how Anton treated her. What do you think of all of the stories she made up? What do you think about her not taking accountability? Let's discuss this and any other thoughts that you have in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn that notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you follow my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok all will be linked down below. And if you have any case suggestions, please make sure to fill out the Google form, which is also listed down below. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.